at the Q&A box. Uh, we will do our best to answer them for everybody. On behalf of the Little Tokyo Business Association, the Little Tokyo Business Improvement District, and the Asian Business Association, we want to welcome you um, as we talk about getting back to business and how important that is. My name is Dennis Huang. I'm the Executive Director for the Asian Business Association. And since 1976, ABA has been representing the Asian American business owners to create business opportunity for our members and the diverse community. This mission continued to be more challenging, as many of you know, especially the last few months where discrimination on Asian Americans and Asian-owned businesses was evident. Nationally, Asians have seen the sharpest increase in unemployment rate since February. This is why community-based organizations like ours and the folks you see around this panel today is much needed to continue that support for Asian American business community. Together, we are on a, we're on a mission to gather lots of information to filter out the right ones and to help small business on the path to recovery. First hour today, you will hear from uh, Metro, you will hear from the LA County of Public Health, as well as the city of LA. At three o'clock, um, if you are a list better in Japanese, uh, Mike, uh, I'm gonna, <laughs> Mike Okamoto, sorry, Mike, he's the president of Little Tokyo Business Association, will be conducting a session in Japanese. Um, a couple others from the LTSC, Little Tokyo Service Center, will be joining him as well. And you wanna stay tuned for that. Uh, before I turn this over and introduce our first guest, I wanna remind you, ABA, on our website, we do already have some information on there. Just go to abala.org. On the, there's a button that says solutions. Click on that, you'll get to a place about the PP, PPP loan forgiveness application. So one thing is obviously to get the loan. The second thing is, hey, if we can get that loan forgiven. Yesterday, they came out with an easy form that's available to you. Uh, so it's already on our website, so take a look at that. City of LA is also has a paint restoration program, if you may not know, that can help you in your businesses. Um, and also, there's some guidelines that the state gave to reopen businesses. We have those links available. Um, if you want to join ABA and our, some of our program, next week we'll be talking about how you can adapt technology so you can adapt to future-proof your business, and you will hear directly from some of our members. And in July, we have a social, online social event because we want to get social back in social distancing, so it's a fun <laughs> a group that we're doing and it's a networking group um and i would say that uh, a little bit of a surprise that small group activities that we do uh, that we're doing attendees can't escape from so i threw some little clues in there that what we're doing i hope you kind of got that but without any further ado let me bring uh, let me introduce ellen ellen endo is a journalist uh she has a professional experience including 20 years uh, associate with the Rafu Shimpo as a senior level position in television and motion pictures. I did not know this until I read up on you. Uh, those uh, TV would be ABC Network and MGM and United Artists. She currently serves as a president of Little Tokyo Business Improvement District and serves as communication writer and media relations through her own business, Hapa Consulting Service. Ellen, please hey. welcome. <laughs> Hi, thank you very much, Dennis, and thank you for the introduction. It's uh, 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 We really feel privileged to be able to partner with uh, the Asian Business Association in this way, because I think it, this is an important topic. And um, so I'm hoping um, we're able to answer some people's questions or raise the right questions uh, and get answers from the experts that have been assembled. Um, uh, I'm, I'm actually co-chair of the Little Tokyo Business Improvement District with Joanne Kumamoto, who is standing by as a resource uh, for, uh, for some of the topics and, and to answer questions if they come up. Uh, at this point, I, you know, uh, the, the, the uh, Little Tokyo Business Association and the, uh, the manages the Little Tokyo Business Improvement District, and we serve uh, our stakeholder businesses, which, is, which are over 400 right now, and and you know the question is uh, how many will be back when um, 
when uh, the crisis kind of wanes? And how many are um, going to be able to, sh to adjust that are, are doing the delivery, for instance, um, uh, or uh, pick up for the restaurants or for gift shops? How are they going to function? Uh, so we thought this was important to, uh, to sort of provide some of the suggestions, ideas, and regulations that are associated with that. So without further ado, I wanted to um, start with um, Jenny Bredu, who is with uh, Metro, and uh, she is a, um, uh, I, you know, I guess I won't get your, I don't know if I get your title right, but, but she has been very helpful with, in Little Tokyo with social media uh, and uh, uh, marketing and just, just uh, uh, very creative in terms of how to um, uh, promote businesses and, and get the customers back, back into the swing of things. So Jenny, um, thank you for joining us. Thanks. Um, it's always, uh, yeah, no, that title is quite long. Uh, I'm, uh, are you ready for it? Here it comes. Okay. Um, Community Relations Manager in Construction Relations for Capital Projects. I head up the digital strategy team. Wow. Yeah, I yeah. never would have got that. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, have a, I have it written on a, the entire length of my laptop right here to remind myself yeah. of the whole thing. Oh, how big is your business card? And, no. Hey, <laughs> 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 <Are> you, <laughs> David? <laughs> Oh, well, I will tell you, I have the, I, you know, I, uh, I have the most exciting job uh, in that building. Um, not the most important, but definitely the most exciting. Uh, so, yeah, I work in construction relations and I'm part of the Eat Shop Play team. Um, so it's a, that is a construction mitigation program that is focused on helping small businesses along our alignment that we have construction activity to survive construction, but also thrive afterwards. So if we're working hard with businesses on a one-on-one -on -one basis to just get the basics, it's rough. If you think about how, how exciting it is to own your own business number one exciting in air quotes um owning the business is just the start of it you got to get people in the door and when we've just gone through months of people not leaving their apartments not leaving their houses it, it is a huge task to get people to feel comfortable stepping out of their apartments, stepping into your business, you have to do that yourself. You, you know, there's all these bits and pieces. So within the Eat Shop Play program, we've looked at a couple of things of what is the, what's the low hanging fruit? I'm, I'm full of these really trite phrases, so I'm sorry. But what's the low hanging fruit right now? Right now, businesses need to be looking at their Google listing. So many of these websites lift off of Google. If you don't have your, your, the times that you open and the times that you close and your phone number, if it's not correct on the website, get over there. And actually, I'll paste, whoops. Boy, of course, I lost my page right now. Um, let me refresh it. There you go. I'll paste that link in the chat box um, so that everybody can see it. But this is just knowing that your information is up to date is important. So do you want me to keep going or you want me to stop for a moment? I think, I think you're, you're good. Keep, I mean, I want, we want you to keep going a little oh, bit. Oh, okay. Yeah. I'm so I, I think if we can focus a little bit about what Metro is doing in terms of its marketing and maybe Ooh. how they're helping businesses and that social yeah. media would be awesome. Well, from the construction perspective, I, I'm not going to speak to ridership because that is a number one whole different part of the building. Um, and construction during all of this has not stopped. 
it has continued. Um, the, uh, the construction work itself has been uh, part, oh, well, exempt from the Safer at Home. So the work sites have continued. So construction impacts, businesses opened or not, construction impact continues. So we've been focusing uh, on this easy, simple stuff, which is, is your online presence correct? Is it accurate? The other, the next one after that is um, looking at your website and what makes that website easier for you to manage. Metro has a huge website. We've got something over like 25,000 pages on our website. And it's a monster to maintain. All I handle are construction pages. But in terms of the marketing perspective, uh, the eShop Play campaign distributed uh, e email blasts on Friday and then again on Tuesday throughout all of Safer, uh, Safer at Home, encouraging people to reach out to small businesses um, to uh, find out which shops were open, which restaurants were open. And we really worked to start um, encouraging people to call the restaurants directly to place their order for pickup. I've lived in downtown LA since 2004. And one of the biggest challenges that I have found is that um, Uber drivers don't wanna go from Little Tokyo to South Park. So for me to order food in South Park from a Little Tokyo restaurant, the, it's just not happening. There, there, are, there were no drivers who would be willing to pick it up in Little Tokyo and drive it to me. If I wanted food in downtown, if I wanted food in Little Tokyo, I had to get my butt from, where am I? Olymp Olive and Pico over onto Second Street, over onto First Street, because Uber isn't working for me. So for all those apartment buildings in Little Tokyo, all of those new apartment buildings, those kids are stuck in that building. Push your phone number out. Encourage them to call you. Place the order through the, just like we did in the 80s and 90s, when we call the pizza place and they start to recognize our name, we can bring that back. Um, I, I've got a restaurant in my building. I, I call and I'm like, hi. And their reply is, hi, Ginny. Um, it, it's awesome. I, I just need three hamburgers. I'll be down in 15 minutes. Boom. This so Ginny, let me, let me, let me, could, could come up, but the, are the kids, are the kids really <laughs> calling? I've just had a little pushback here. Or are they using other methods? So should they, should the restaurants or something use other method for them to communicate or, or you think uh, phone numbers is good? Phone number, I will tell you, my husband is almost a year younger than me. He prefers the apps, but the apps, this is just how this, this whole downtown dynamic is working. These drivers are not picking up and taking your order to blocks. If you're hopping on Uber Eats or Postmates and they're saying that it's going to take 45 minutes to deliver and you're less than two blocks away, we have to change the conversation and how we're marketing to tell people we are 1,200 steps away from your door. My step count in January was like 10,000 steps a day. Come safer at home. I'm lucky if I break 1200. There's these parts where Uber Eats and Postmates, they're not making these cross downtown shuffles. They're just, it, it, if I'm wrong, I, I hope I can see it in the chat, but I know I'm right. Mostly because I order a lot of Postmates. Um, <laughs> what else I, do you think again, that I, restaurants can do besides um, advertising their phone number. Oh, you know, two big things. One is your, your menu doesn't need to be that big. These days of where the menu, we would get four or five pages of menu, you see like you don't want to have menus on the table. You don't want to have those, the, the sticky things that, you know, that people are looking at and they're like, this is just not, we can't touch these things. QR codes connected to your, connected to your um, menu, connected to your website. And there are tons of ways to get those QR codes out. 
And I'm going to thank Jean Marie for reminding me that the, the QR codes are important. QR codes can connect. And as Jean Marie reminds me, QR codes are quick response. It's an acronym. The QR codes are those little black and white squares. There's like dots. Some of them are color. You can do them in color. If you look at the link that I posted, um, there's tons of websites that can generate a QR code for you. But essentially, you hold your phone up to the QR code, it snaps it, it takes the picture, and it redirects. Sorry, I just dropped everything. It redirects to the website. There you go. So you can have you can have a QR code for the day. You can have it forever. But a QR code for the day can go to what's what's the special? What's been in the fridge and needs to go? Um, the the same thing with businesses that aren't restaurants. Put a a QR code for one of those things that's just sitting on the shelf that's ready to go. When the store is closed, those QR codes can live on. So there's that. So QR codes to your menu, QR codes to your website, QR codes to your special of the day. Shorten down the menus. So you, number one, so you don't have to keep so much in the fridge. Um, I've, spent my teen years working in a restaurant and the amount of food we had to waste because our menu was six pages long. Um, it, it, we just don't need that much. And you don't wanna need that much either. You don't need to keep that in the fridge, but QR codes for your specials. The last one that's probably, um, oh, I had it up here. The last one that's probably the, uh, the new and up and coming thing. It's, I guess you would call it a trend. Um, I'm only 40, so uh, I still feel quite old when it comes to talking about the internet. But the new thing in the internet is these subscription boxes. If you haven't Googled subscription box yet, let me, let me just post that link for you. But subscription boxes essentially is actually, this is actually well versed in Little Tokyo because you see it during the holiday. The whole concept of a grab bag, you don't know what's inside it. A little bit of a flip. In the subscription box, you can put together a theme. So let me post the link here to everybody because I Googled, I Googled and look, found a list of best subscription boxes for ideas. So if you're not a restaurant, You've got to shop. My daughter loves to spend all of my money at two stores in Little Tokyo. You know exactly which ones they are. It's the Hello Kitty store. Oh, she's yelling at me. I am on a conference with like 30 people. Sorry, she's 11. Um, Hello Kitty and the place right across the way where there's like 6 million different kinds of pens, teacups you know that you could put together themes and a box with like four or five items. You could sell it for 20 bucks. You could sell a nicer one for $30. You could even put together a plan so that every month somebody is buying at least, you know, one set of these boxes. Um, I personally, I know my husband is hooked on this one kind that is geared just towards guys. Um, and I use everything in it. Uh, it's, <laughs> it's these, the, the subscription boxes allow for businesses to make recommendations to their customers without the customers having to come into the store. You could post that information about what's in this month's subscription box and see what happens. A lot of this, a lot of the recovery is going to be about spaghetti. You know, when you make spaghetti, you're boiling it and you're throwing pasta on the wall and you're looking for something that sticks. The things that stuck last year, the things that stuck last month, they may not be here anymore, but you have an opportunity here to try something that you've been meaning to try. This is, I would say, one of the, sounds horrible to say it like this, but probably one of the more better atmospheres and more of an economic situation for you to try out something without, without losing much more. And that's the sad part, is that how much more do we have to lose? But at this point, we have opportunities. Very nice. Uh, thank you for that. So, so spaghetti metaphor, I was wondering where you're going with that. 
<laughs> so Most people good. do. So you throw it at the wall. You clearly you, have, you need to make some spaghetti tonight. I've got extra yeah. pasta. Swing by. Wonderful. Some some of my takeaway I got was trying mm -hmm. to using QR codes, right? Using QR codes to link it to a website somewhere where you modify or simplify, I think better way, simplify the menu itself for menus itself, right? And in terms of uh, items, uh, maybe making, again, a simplified uh, things that you can push out. And I would say, you know, most of subscriptions, a monthly basis. So what I'm hearing is maybe making that a little bit more frequent, maybe on a weekly basis. We have weekly basis on this, right? So pushing that out as well. Um, and, I, and I hear you in terms of, I think the business term is dead stock, right? You can use the dead stock as uh, items to um, promote for that week and sell out of it. First comes to first serve, limited run on this, come get it while you can. So those are fantastic uh, suggestions. So thank you very much uh, for that. Um, Ellen, would you like me to introduce Scott? Would you like to introduce Scott? Then we move on to uh, it. No, you go ahead and introduce Scott. You, okay. You've done your homework. I, I, I will try. So, okay. so what I know of Scott, and Scott will correct me as he comes on, <laughs> that he has worked as an environmental health uh, division of the LA County Department of Public Health for 23 years. He's currently managing uh, the, uh, the environmental uh, protection branch, where he's responsible for overseeing cross-connection and water pollution control program, the drinking water program, and the land use program. He has his bachelor's degree for environmental health from San Diego State. I believe like, that's also the same school as Kawhi Leonard, but I'm just, I miss basketball, I know. <laughs> I'm in a master in public health from Cal State Long Beach. I have to say it like that. Scott, if you can please share some information about how local businesses can better understand and to navigate the new regulation of public health. We appreciate that. Well, thank Scott. you very much, Dennis. Um, I think you had a slightly old res uh, resume of mine. Uh, <laughs> I've been promoted to the director of our district surveillance and enforcement branch for about a year now. Um, okay. In that capacity, I'm in charge of regulating all of the restaurants and food markets in the county. And since the um, start of the COVID pandemic, I've been responsible for the enforcement of an education of operators uh, as to what the requirements are for operating um, under the COVID rules. So if I can share my screen here, I'm going to you should be able to my screen to and go to Are you seeing my screen now with my Department of Public Health logo? All right. Yeah. Great. Um, so this is the protocols for retail reopening. A lot of our protocols are very similar, but they are, um, some of them have different things for them. So like dine-in restaurants is significantly different from opening a retail store. Um, coming up soon, we are gonna be having the uh, reopenings for bars, uh, personal services such as massage, um, uh, tattoo parlors, um, and nail salons. And we already have the hair salons and barber shops already open. So each one of those has its own protocol that's on our website. So the main things we need to do is we need to protect our employee health. So all employees need to be advised not to come into work if they're sick. We need to provide cloth face coverings to your employees so that they, and they must wear them when they are in, in contact or likely to come in contact with others. We need to be disinfecting common areas and high touch surfaces hourly. Ensure workspaces are at least six feet apart and know what to do in, if a case of COVID is reported among an employee so that you know what to do with the employees who have been in close contact with them. So anybody who's been within six, six feet of an, another employee for 10 minutes um, would have to be quarantined for a minimum of 14 days. Um, or if the person was exposed through a cough or a sneeze, that person would also need to be quarantined for 14 days. Anybody who is sick needs to be quarantined until they are free from symptoms and then an additional three days. Um, again, 
immediately advise employees to isolate at home for 10 days plus three days after they are symptom free. Develop a list of employees who are in close contact with a positive employee, which starts two days before that in-person symptom started. And again, I covered what the close contact is. Those in close contact stay home for 14 days and consider a protocol on how employees can obtain COVID diagnostic testing. Know where the testing centers are, know what they need to be able to have in order to go get a free uh, test, whether it's a doctor's note or if there's uh, city uh, testing sites available that don't require doctor's notes. You need to post signs at your entrances, notifying customers not to enter if they're sick. Um, per, this is an example of one that's on our website. So it's stay home if you have a cough or fever, stay six feet away from other customers and staff as much as possible, use a face covering while you're in the store, and clean hands with soap and water or sanitizer after touching frequently contact, contacted surfaces. Cloth face coverings must be used when you're in the stores. The cloth face covering is so that if you yourself are infected and don't know it, that you don't spread it to other people. I've seen people wearing their mask and then they go to cough and they pull their mask down. Now the purpose of the mask is so that if you're going to cough, you don't spread it throughout the facility. <clears throat> and it should be worn whenever, whenever you are coming into contact with somebody or have the potential to come in contact with somebody. Enforce physical distancing. You want to have floor markers down that are six feet apart, showing where customers can stand when they're waiting in line to either check out or to speak to somebody um, in order to obtain service. Also, because you're supposed to be operating at a 50% capacity in your store, if you have to queue people up outside the store, you should have markings on the ground outside the store showing people where they should be waiting. Other infection control measures is having customers wear masks. The governor recently, uh, today issued a statement that is requiring everyone in the state to begin wearing masks whenever they're out in public. It's no longer up to the local health officer. It's now a statewide requirement that you have to be wearing a mask when you're out in public. Um, payment stations, shopping carts, hand baskets should be disinfected after each customer. Prop open all non-automatic doors and provide hand sanitizer to customers at entrances. Um, provide information on pre-orders and safety guidelines online if possible so your customers can order and get in and out really quick if they need to. If they need to come in and do shopping, um, make sure they can see what needs to be done before they come into your store online. Also, make sure your ventilation systems are working properly. Have the filters changed in your air conditioning so that they're effective um, and working well. And that you have the, a, a good air turnover to make sure that it's not stagnant in the store. Um, our full protocols are online. This is our, our website here. So it's publichealth.lacounty.gov slash coronavirus. And the protocol needs to be completed prior to a business beginning to reopen. And then it needs to be posted at the store and provided to every employee. To file a complaint, you can contact our Environmental Health Customer Call Center at 888-700-9995 or at our website at publichealth.lacounty.gov slash eh. Oops. And for more information, you can call the city at 211. You can contact our website, send us an email at ph.info at ph.lacounty.gov, and we have Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube accounts that you can find more information at as well. Thank you very much. And Thank you, Scott. Um, is it, uh, and, and I don't know, Ellen, or do, would, you, would you mind sharing those slides with Ellen as well so we can get it to the folks, especially those links. I think those are very helpful information. Sure. Uh, well, so thank you for that. I, I really like the part that we can get on there and download the signs so people can start using them and posting them. Um, I also think that um, 
I think it's, it's good that we emphasize at least six foot away from one another. Uh, I, it reminds me like when you're talking about face covering, uh, back in February when we heard about it earlier, because maybe my relatives and my media family is from Asia, they can hear it. We were wearing masks in the public and people were just giving us the dirtiest look. Now, when people don't wear it, we give them the dirtiest look or, or we try, but <laughs> things just kind of turned around. <laughs> yeah. oh, oh, Dennis, uh, Joanne, I think if, if, if she can come on, she has the, um, some information related to the signage uh, that uh, might make it um, more available to local businesses. Can you can you jump on Joanne or I lost her. Uh, Joanne, if you can unmute yeah. yourself, that'd be fantastic because we'd love <laughs> to hear you. I know we forget once in a while here. Yeah, we'll yes. there Sorry. you are. All right, here yeah. we go. So yeah, yeah. so yeah. could you explain what, what um, how we're making uh, able to make some of these the signage re required available? Right. Um, we're working with Metro and also with um, the Little Tokyo, um, uh, Elton, Little Tokyo um, Service Center, and what we will do is, if people need the required signage, um, please let us know and let us know if you're a restaurant or um, you know a retail merchant, and we can help make some of these signages, so the signage available to you and deliver it over to your business. So I think right now, if you, um, you know, let, give us, give us, uh, send us an email or um, send us, a, I guess you can call our Little Tokyo Business Association number and um, let us know and uh, we'll work with them and, and make sure that, you know, you get the signage that you need. Okay, yeah, the, um, yeah, just, you can call Little Tokyo Business Association at area code 213-880-6875, or uh, go online, I, uh, it's not up yet, but give me, give me a couple hours, it, it'll be uh, online at our website, visitlittletokyo.com, and visit Little Tokyo is all one word, visitlittletokyo.com, it's really easy, and we'll have the information for you. Hey, Ellen, if you don't mind, I think it'd be helpful if you can just go ahead and put that in the chat box, um, okay, maybe sure. the phone number and the email both. I think people could be, might be a little bit easier if they can okay. kind of cut and paste. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. So that'd be awesome. Help, continue to help out our community. Well, okay. I'm excited to introduce Layla Lee. <laughs> Layla is a community manager, a community business manager for the office of uh, LA Mayor Eric Garcetti. So we invite her here, to her, we invite her today, obviously to see what the city is doing to support technical assistance, financial options, and maybe customer acquisition. I think she's kind of new to her again, new maybe two years, I could be wrong, maybe a year, but I, m my research tells me that you are a Bruin, is that correct? Uh, no, I'm a No, <laughs> I, my mistake, forgive me. Yeah. But well, my research is bad. <laughs> I'm very offended, but okay. <laughs> oh, no. Is it the other school? Yeah, the other school. <laughs> the other school. The other school. Uh, a Trojan. My mistake. You're now really offended because the blue background kind of maybe threw me off. So, uh, we're the city. <laughs> that's right. Thank you. Elena, take it, take it away. Uh, thank you so much for having me here. And thank you, Scott, because I feel like he did, you know, we're pretty much following. LA County uh, public health mandate. So I think half of my presentation is pretty much there, already done. <laughs> so for now, let me um, share my screen with you as well. So one second, can you see? Okay. So again, thank you so much for- uh, Leila, we can't, I don't know if we can see it yet. You can't see my screen? Ah, one second, shit, oh. So I can tell you jokes in the meantime, I'm kidding. Uh, <laughs> I don't know, I keep on picking the wrong screen. Give me one second, guys, I'm sorry. That's okay. Okay, now I can see it, right? Hey, there we are. Yay, I can do this. You did. You're good. 
<laughs> no Trojans. <laughs> hey. Okay. Um, well, yeah. Anyways, thank you so much for having me here. Thank you for the little Tokyo Business Association. Thank you for the Asian Business Association. I'm just so happy to be here on behalf of the mayor and the and our Office of Economic Development. Um, I work with within the Office of Economic Development and uh, the Community Business Division and. Our goal within this um, division is just really to shift policies and provide resources and programs that support business growth and vitality. So um, given all that has been happening throughout the city and with COVID-19, you know, it's, it's really, um, I'm very happy to be here and share some of these resources with you today. So let me start. Oh. So, this is again copying public health work, but pretty much, you know, we're following public uh, LA County public health. Uh, we have already have open stage one and two, and now we're waiting for public health. Um, they're okay to go into st stage three. So pretty much just to, and we do have a lot of questions that come into our office. So just to kind of like um, summarize everything. On the left, you see the non-essential businesses that can open at this point. And on the right, you see the non-essential businesses that must remain closed. Um, obviously, retail, restaurants, beauty salons, et cetera, now can open, uh, and they all have to follow uh, public health protocols. Uh, whereas nail salons, body waxing, and tattoo shops, bars, et cetera, they do have to remain closed, as uh, Scott said. And so in terms of our, re from the city's point of view, you know, we do have um, some rules that everyone has to follow. So one of the things is to provide or reimburse costs of plus face covering for employees. Um, that is mandated by the city. You do have to implement social distancing measures for employees and customers. And they all should be in accordance to the protocols provided by the Department of Public Health. Um, you also have to allow employees to wash their hands every 30 minutes. And if you're a grocery, drug, retail, and food delivery worker, um, business, make sure you follow the worker protection um, order that was instituted in the city, which provides um, different, as, um, you know, family leave options for family leave and sick leave options for people that are working th these type of workers. And you, and as Scott said, you can prepare, implement, and post safety protocols according to your industry. And those are available at the public health um, website. And I put it there for you too as well. Um, again, just to go over this very quick, just like the, the county, we're following them and you do have to prepare the, the protocols. Um, a lot of people don't understand that the protocols are actually three pieces, of, three or more pieces of paper that you have to fill in. You have to prepare it. Uh, you have to attach it to the city's safer at or safer LA order, and then post it in, in near or near um, at or near the entrance of your um, business. So that's very important that everybody want everybody does that. And just for um, liability issues as well is is really important and that's part of also one of the uh, city mandates that you share this uh, protocol with all of your employees you know you want to make sure that the employees real understand what the rules are and how they have to maintain um, the best health health uh, strategies and procedures within your facility and that's really going to help you along the way um, as, as you open up and you you know a lot of the businesses are just um, have to protect themselves from any liabilities. Um, so the city has created, we had several working groups with different industry leaders, you know, from retailers to uh, gym operators, etc. And we created different toolkits. And the toolkits are really, really great tools for every business. And I really hope everybody can visit this website because what the toolkits provides is strategies and best practices for safe operations. And it also provides supporting materials and it's really catered to your specific business. Uh, the protocols, I, the way I see it, the protocols are mandates by LA County and mandates that we all have to follow. But the toolkit provides even 
it even goes a little bit further than that and provide resources for you to um, welcome your customers back and also increase business by implementing certain strategies that will help you continue business going forward. And one of the things that it does provide is also different, you know, we were talking about different uh, signage. It does, uh, if you visit this website, we do have signage that you can download and print for free. Uh, next. We understand that some of the businesses in Little Tokyo were vandalized and looted. If, and if that's you, please uh, visit this website, the free paint restoration at EWDDLACity.com. We're offering absolutely free painting for the inside and outside of your, of your business. Um, the Painters and Allied uh, Trades District Number 36, a union, a painters union, they're helping us with through this process. So if you do have and uh, a looted business, please let us know as well. Um, and if you could also share that information with Dennis, I'd really appreciate it because I am collecting um, the, a list of businesses that were damaged during the, the civil unrest. Um, again, if your if your build, building was vandalized or damaged, there are approvals for rebuilding, and we are we are expediting those approvals. So you can go to ladbs.org, and they'll provide um, they'll expedite every permit and also provide holler requirement, you know, any holler requirements are also waived at this time. If you need a demolition um, and dumpster services, you can also contact LA City Sanitation because they will provide roll off and dumpster services to help clear out any debris that you, you, you may still have in your business. If your area needs cleanup tools and equipment, uh, we have the city's office of community beautification and they will provide tools uh, for you to clean up your business or around your business. Um, if you have graffiti on your business, you please call 311. And again, all of these services are completely free and someone will come with a truck and repaint your business, you know, just the graffiti part. Um, I would do recommend if it's a, a huge restoration, you know, where the entire building might have to be repainted, please go to the free paint restoration program. But if it's just um, a little graffiti here and there, then call 311. And, and cleanup assistance, um, we know that there's a lot of, there's several volunteers that want to help through the cleanup process. So, you know, you email info at laworks.com and we'll have volunteers helping you clean up the damage. And for businesses that are looking to, um, they're look, still looking for PPP, PPE, uh, you can visit laprotects.org. And even if you're a manufacturer that's providing PPP, PPE, please visit as well because, um, and if you go visit, there's a PPE calculator where you can, you know, determine how much PPE your business will, will need. There's a lot of different um, confusion of how much PPE a business will, will need required, you know, in the coming days. So that will, will provide a lot of assistance for a lot of people. And one of the main things that I, I do want to share is just that we understand that several businesses are getting um, receiving letters from their landlords where they are, you know, requiring them to pay um, for the last three months rent, even this for businesses that have been closed for the entire time during COVID-19. And please understand that the emergency uh, order is still not over, that the emergency period is not over, and you're not required to pay rent until three months after. Any back to rent, it doesn't have to be paid until three months after the emergency period is over. Um, it's still not over, but regardless, people are receiving letters from their landlords. And if that's you, please visit uh, coronavirusla. Uh, slash la represents. We will connect you with one of the um, with the, an attorney that can help you, you know, draft a letter to your landlord or help you with, you know, represent you if you, if that's what you need at this time as well. Um, and just going really quickly over some uh, regulatory relief that the city has provided all of our businesses, you know, sales of alcoholic beverages is permitted now by restaurants for offsite consumption for delivery and takeout. Um, it's also permitted by retail stores of al alcoholic beverages for offsite consumption. Uh, parking enforcement is relaxed and extended. Grace period is given to vehicles owned and operated by manufacturing or healthcare workers. 
and all deadlines prescribed in the LA Municipal Code pertaining to public hearings, including expiration dates for utilization of existing approvals, um, such as entitlements and building permits are told and suspended until further notice. And again, I can't highlight this enough because this is the main issue that everybody is calling our office about at this moment. Um, the, during the local emergency period, a tenant that is able to show an inability to pay rent due to circumstances related to COVID-19 can repay any back to rent up to three months following the expiration of the local emergency. And again, local emergency is still not, um, has not ended yet. If you own the building or you're also, you know, for your home, there's also mortgage payment relief from, from the state and you can visit this website that's on your screen. Um, if you have water and power bills that you're receiving and you would like to request a payment plan for maybe up to 12 months, please visit www.ladwp.com and they can provide you an extension and a payment plan that will work for you. And also, you know, insurance is a major issue at this point. So all insurance companies are providing their policyholders with at least 60 day grace period to pay their pay premiums. So make sure you contact your um, insurance. Um, this is, I'm gonna ve go very quickly with this. I know I only had five minutes, so I'm sorry I went over, but um, there, there are several things that were, that were extended to help little uh, small businesses, you know, uh, survive this pandemic. And I've listed them here. Um, I'll share you. I'll share with you later the the PowerPoint so you can um, review it. And again, these are some a quick summary of all the different loans that are available from our city, the federal, state, and county levels. Uh, one of the things that I do want to highlight in this tomorrow, um, LA Metro. Thank you, Jeannie. Um, the, they have a transit oriented community small business recovery loan program. And if you are within like a quarter mile from the uh, little Tokyo uh, Metro station, please apply for this today because it ends tomorrow. And no, actually I got big news for you. We're putting out the email. I just received this information while we were, while we've been on this, um, the, uh, the application period is going to be extended. Oh, great. So, Yay. <laughs> Do you know to so, what date? Yeah, I, I, I don't know. Uh, the email exchange is going back and forth right now. So right now, the, the, the thought is one week, but then there's still some more back and forth of much longer. That's so I would just say, but it does look like there's um, over 200 people who have started the application process, but only about 70 something have finished the application process. Yeah. So okay. really want to push upon people that this is not a this is not an application program that Metro has merely given money to the program. The county is administering it, but it's very important that if people started the application process, that they complete the application process. Yeah, and it's twenty thousand dollars, so that doesn't come very easily. So <laughs> make sure you you do it, and we have to take advantage of this. But that's only for businesses that are within a quarter, correct, of the Metro station. Sorry, yes. I see that there's somebody who's just called in that they're not seeing me bob my head, yes. Okay. Um, and again, I, I know this can be a little bit overwhelming, so you know, feel free to ask me questions afterwards. But then um, if you need pro bono legal assistance, please visit LA Represents. If you still need, you know, right now they reopen EIDL applications. And, and as you may know too, they also extended the, the period for which um, PPPs, you know, you can use PPP for. So now it's for 24 weeks. So if you do have SBA loan assistance issues, please um, visit LA Cares Corps. And that's actually a partnership between us and LA County. Um, please visit LA Protects if you need to, if you're trying to buy or manufacture cloth space coverings. If you're looking to hire, um, and I know, Oh, several businesses have told us that it's been very difficult to hire people because of the uh, unemployment benefits. So please, but there are a lot of people that are looking for work. So please visit LA Jobs Portal or the WorkSource Centers. Um, LADWP, if you want to request a payment plan. Uh, if, you, if you have more trash than usual, please, um, and you want to, or less trash than usual because you closed your business, for a while or you're decreasing capacity, please, um, you can adjust your recycler service level through that number, that 1-800 number. 
Uh, if you do need free extra trash collection, just know that we are providing it for free temporarily. Um, if you like to donate or sell hotel motel rooms, you please visit that website. If you're looking to buy or sell medical personal protection equipment, which means N95s and such, please uh, visit Logistics Victory LA, lovela.org. And if you are a restaurant um, looking to for temporary food pickup parking, there's that website. If you're a retail looking for a temporary pickup parking, there's also that website for that. And if you're a restaurant or a coffee shop and such that's looking to extend um, sitting area, because as, as you know, now we have to, the capacity is I believe is 60% for restaurants. Um, so if you do want to extend to your parking lot or your sidewalk, please uh, visit um, LA Al Fresco to do so. And, and just to let you know, Alfresco is also providing different bids and different chambers uh, the, and different organizations an option to also close um, streets fully or, or partially through the Alfresco program. And lastly, um, if, you, if you're looking for completely free uh, business assistance, and when we're talking about business assistance, this you're, you're trying to apply for loans. You don't know how to get your paperwork together. Um, you're looking for marketing help. You're looking for anything business related. We have nine different business source centers all over the city and they, they have consultants that are there waiting for you to provide you completely free business assistance. So please take advantage of that. Um, we also have a rapid response uh, department within that business, within EWDD, which if you're having issues with like, um, working with departments and such, please contact that, that email. Um, LA County obviously has a, an amazing um, help center for business owners. The, and, and there's different partners like the, our local SBDC, our SCORE offices and Bixo Exchange. They're very um, reputable partners that, again, provide completely free business assistance. And we did for in, in our the EWDD LACD.com. You can also find a policy guide for Los Angeles small businesses, especially the policies that are related to COVID-19. You know, there's a lot of confusion on what, what can and cannot be done and what policies are there to, to provide relief at this moment. Um, that policy guide can give, provide you that. Whereas the resilience toolkit for Los Angeles small businesses provides different um, techniques, strategies, and different loan programs that are available in the city, state, and county to help you through this, you know, um, go through this pandemic. And lastly, if you have any questions, you can also contact our mayor help desk. There's also a phone number. Um, more information regarding coronavirus can be found at that website. And my division, if you would like to contact our division within the mayor's office, you please, um, email us at mayor.communitybusiness at lacd.org. And that's all. Thank you wow. for your time. Hey, Ellen. You. Um, I yeah, need to and I apologize for going over. <laughs> no, no, that's, no, it's great, it's great. Ellen, yeah. let, let me, before, I'm gonna let you close out, okay? okay. But before we go, we go there, um, and I'm just digesting everything, right? <laughs> and, and I think it's hard, right? Because there's so much information, it's so good. So small businesses out there, just take a little time out, take a breath, right? Know that there's support. We need to get businesses back. Know that it's out there. I think folks on the, today's, and, and you'll, you'll hear a little bit more the next hour as well, uh, we are really serious on bringing businesses back. We know that as retailers, probably hit the hardest the most. And that is such a big part of our community. They employ more people than anybody else in the retail sector. So that's why everybody's sort of on board to help. Uh, but the first thing I would ask you to do is to click on Metro's link <laughs> with that. Just finish that tonight. If anything, that's low hanging fruit. Let's get that done. Right, Jenny? By the way, bless you. I saw you sneeze. <laughs> but, uh, do that. I think that's a great way to start to get you right. Once you get that, I think uh, um, with Layla's information, with Scott's information as well, that you have enough just go one step at a time. You know, they've been, they said to us that what's the best way to eat an elephant? One bite at a time. So we'll have to do it because we're here to support you to do that. With that in mind, 
Ellen, I'll turn it back to you and thank you for having me today to, to move this panel along and uh, we'll let you close and shift over to our Japanese segment. Okay, well, before, before that, uh, Dennis, I know you have some um, information about the PPP and you know, doing the other part of it so, that it so this grant doesn't become a loan. Uh, do you have some pointers for people who, uh, who, have, who have applied and received the PPP? I think it's just, you gotta be mindful, even though you have 24 weeks, right? Now the internet for 24 weeks, you wanna be mindful how repayment looks like because repayment or forgiveness is so much different than a loan. Loan, we pay back. Forgiveness, that's your money. Please, please take the time to figure that out. That's why we want to make sure the application, you see what they're looking for. Uh, banks will be the one that's going to be looking at this. So it may be a good idea to talk with your banker to see what that looks like. Um, but uh, obviously you have time, but it's going to come quick. As long as you have an idea, you'll operate it as such as you move forward. Um, I know it's instead of 75% now in wages, it's dropped down to 60% you can pay in wages. So again, work with your bankers. They're probably the expertise on getting waived because it's up to them to waive that loan. And you know what? I actually highly recommend that they set up a separate bank account just for PPP loans. Right. Bankers has been saying that, right? Because they, they, I think a lot of businesses did not go your traditional banks to get them. They went to a minority bank. Um, so yes, so Leila, you're absolutely right. Well, thank you, Dennis, uh, and uh, uh, thank you for setting all this up and making it happen. Uh, I want to thank uh, Jenny Bredeau and Scott Abbott and Layla Lee especially, and then all the people who are kind of working behind the scenes, Joanne Kumamoto, Mike Okamoto, uh, Megan Teramoto, and Mariko Lockridge. So uh, this has been, it's beyond my expectations. I thought the information was so valuable I wish I still worked for a major network. I would have made them broadcast it, you know, but, but anyway, thank you everyone. Uh, we, we are so appreciative. And uh, uh, if you, you know, if you're inclined, please stick around for the Japanese version. And uh, I personally, I have to go and learn Japanese myself. So it'll be interesting. <laughs> anyway, thank you everyone. I like. Yeah. How are you? I'm still working I'm hard in Little Tokyo today, we see. Still in Little Tokyo. <laughs> good. That's good. great. We need people, more people in their community. Yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah, my yeah. office used to be there for 10 years, and now we moved across the freeway to Chinatown. But I love yeah. Little Tokyo. It's still it's a great place. We still go back there because we all know all the great places to eat and great places to shop. Um, so we'll, we'll, turn this call, we'll turn this back to, uh, to you uh, for the next hour. Wow. Oh, am I saying that right? I'm not saying that right. <laughs> well, that was really great. So whoever wants to stick around for another, you know, whatever the time, I guess, um, up to one hour. <laughs> but uh, uh, we, uh, can we have Scott and uh, Leila Lee do some brief explanation of what you have presented in the English section, or is that possible? Sure. Oh, okay. Well, you don't have to do it in Japanese. Okay, good. <laughs> I was worried about that. That's good. <laughs> Is Mariko there? Mariko? Um, let me... Yes. Okay, yeah. now you, you're muted. So you can, I think you can do the uh, brief translation as needed basis. And I, I guess you can, everybody can unmute yourself so that if you have any question, you can just yell and shout or whatever, ask for the explanation. Okay? There's a lot of information. So, you know, if you just keep listening, then uh, waiting for the time to uh, ask, then you will forget what, you, will, what yeah. you heard. So feel free to interrupt and just ask questions. Okay? Yeah, what's, one thing before they get started is when... Um, Jenny was talking, and I think I mentioned it when we first talked, Jenny. But uh, the, in Jap you know how Marie, Marie Kondo is the is the organizer queen. <laughs> anyway, there's a woman who is the uh, in Japan is the queen of the kits, the kinds of things you're talking about. You know, the, so they're actually we're getting ready to open up. Not, you know, this one woman, a friend of hers or or a protege, was getting ready to open up a shop 
I think in the South Bay somewhere, maybe yeah. Torrance or Gardena. And the, and then the close, the shutdown happened. So she didn't get a chance to launch her business, but she's planning to do it soon. And in the meantime, she donated, she, this is a crafting one. Mm -hmm. So it's a crafting kit. So each, each month you'll receive uh, you know, uh, uh, some the, the uh, materials and the instructions and and uh, she says it's very popular in Japan and uh, she expects it to be kind of popular here. But in the meantime, she donated uh, like uh, 50 kits to, to the senior center and then she, I think she's done that a couple of times. Yeah, so she's, you know, she just uh, wants to raise, raise awareness and so she's, you know, she's not discouraged. She just got delayed. Ellen, uh, Leila, I know that on your toolkits, you have have them available in many languages, and Japanese is one of the languages. And I think that people can go to your your website there and, and get the materials in Japanese as well. Yeah, I believe so. Okay. Right. Let me see. Let me check how many participants. We have 19 participants right now. And uh, let me check who are the these. I, I think there's there's some folks in my group. There's I see Abraham and I see Robin. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Sorry. We have some uncle there too. They tell them to go get back yeah. to work. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, I suppose some of you uh, need some uh, translation help. So, okay. Uh, Mariko, uh, can you uh, help um, Scott as he does the uh, presentation on the county side, health department? Oh my gosh, uh, okay. No, <laughs> just give them a kind of brief idea. And uh, I, I, I see that many of the people, participants, were there in the first section, English section. So uh, you can always refer it, you know, to the information that will be uh, provided later on. But just to give them, uh, you know, overall idea of what we've been talking about and what kind of informations uh, and materials are available for, to help them. Okay. All right, Scott. Okay. So the the most important thing is that you need to go to our website and download the protocols appropriate to your business and complete that before before opening your business. Um, you need to make sure that you're protecting your employees' health by making sure they know not to come to work if sick. それと、それともあの、もし従業員が、えっと、病気になった場合は、必ず会社に来ない、来ないように教えてください。And then providing cloth face coverings for your employees to wear when they're in contact with the public. あと従業員のために必ずマスクの用意してください。And disinfect commonly touched surfaces. And if an employee uh, reports becoming ill, they need to be advised to stay at home for 10 days plus additional three days after they're symptom free. と、従業員が病気になった場合は必ず家で10日、あの、10日間をえっと休んで休んでください。または、えっと、もしまた病気がえっとある場合はまたはまた3日間プラス3日間を必ず休んでください。Are we supposed to be able to see your screen right now, Mr. Abbott? Do you want me to share it with you again? Yeah, maybe while you're speaking, that way they can also yeah. kind of see as they're hearing. Right. Is that up for everyone? Um, is Bianca there? No. Oh. There we go. Oh, there you are. Okay. All right. Um, 
And then any close contacts need to be advised to stay home for 14 days if they've had, if they've, if they've been in close contact with someone who's sick. Um, by sick, you mean with COVID, right? With COVID. Okay. もし従業員が、えー、と自分の一緒に住んでいる方が COVID が、えー、とかかった場合は必ず14日をあの休んであの会社から休んでください。And then let your employees know how to get free, how to get testing either from their doctor or from a, a free testing site. あとは従業員にえっ、ー、とどうそのえっ、ー、と COVID-19 のテストを受ける方法を教えてください。Can I ask at this moment? Yes.、Oh, yeah. yeah. Go ahead. Okay,、um, I am not so sure about、uh, symptom.、Uh, it doesn't exactly say what symptom you really have to look for. Like just a, the, you know, the coughing or even including the diarrhea or any kind of a specific symptom that we have to think about at this moment. The most common symptoms for COVID that we want to be paying attention to are fever and cough.、Mm -hmm. um, Those are the most, if, if you have either of those, you need to be staying home. So, how about the fever? How hot i t have to be? Or about?、Um, if you have any fever, you should be staying at home.、Oh. Yeah, so compared with your normal、specific. fever. Yeah. Normal fever. Okay. Compared with your normal fever, if you have a high up you know, fever, then、mm -hmm. you have to worry about it. Yeah, normal is considered 98.6. So I would think anything above 100 or more is considered a fever, yeah. As far as how How much tolerance you would like to have? you know, I think it's really up to、uh, each person, right? We're not a medical doctor, but. So you, know. you don't have to look, look after for like a headache or anything like that? No. Okay. I mean, we're not just, saying just that you、thinking. need to isolate if you just have a headache. So, you know,、mm. make sure you don't have a fever.、Um, and if you've, you know, if it's not going away, make sure you, you know, then contact your doctor.、Mm. Um, so, customers should post signs. All right, sorry, not customers. Employers should, businesses should post signs for customers so that they know not to come into the store if they're sick. So, こちらのサインを、えー、とお店の窓にあの貼ってください。This sign should also say to stay six feet away from other customers as much as possible. えー、と、OK。ソーシャルディスタンスですね。6フィート。あそうですね、えーと。こちらの方の書いてあるサインが、えー、と一番目の上にそのベッドで寝てる方が、えーと、お客さんがもし病気になった場合は家で休んでください。そして2番目の方が、えー、と他のお客さんまたはスタッフから6フィートは 2, 2メートルでしたっけ ?2 メートル弱。うん日本では2メートルしてますけどね。2メートルからあの必ず離れてください。And then everyone, every customer should be required to have a cloth face covering when entering the store in order to receive service. あと3番目の絵が、えー、とお店に入るお客さんが必ずフェイスマスクをつけてください。And face masks are to protect the, the people That you're interacting with, not to protect you. So it's in case you're asymptomatic, so you don't spread it to someone else. Go ahead. Oh, sorry. The face mask is to protect others, not to protect yourself. Is that、yeah. correct? That's correct. 
広げない自分を守るというよりも人にうつさないということがフェイスマスクマスクの基本的な原理です。OK? Inside your store or business, you should have markings showing where six feet apart is so people know where to stand in line. And then store should be operating at 50% capacity. Um, quick question How do they calculate the 50% capacity? I believe that most businesses are told by the fire department what their capacity should be.、Mm -hmm. And so that it's, they, it's posted. Yeah, it should be posted.、Yeah. Right. Have any, I know, Kokono, Saiko, Shuyo, Jing, one, Nani, this, the two Jokai, Tarimas, no, there, and so they are my show, the Shiro Sarelun, so they're not go to pass and to me as to stick with a site. And if people are going to wait outside, there should be markings outside as well to denote where six feet is. 並ぶときには大体もう6フィートごとというね印、いかに印がついてあのバッテンがついてたり、丸ついてたりしてますんで、それを必ず守ってくださいということですね。And then,、um, customers should be required to wear face masks. Um, is this different from the other one? Or... No, it's actually it's the same thing.、Um, the other one was a sign. That had to be posted. This is to make sure that they're actually wearing them.、Um, payment stations, shopping carts, and hand baskets need to be disinfected after each customer. Red とかカートとかそれからハンドバスケットなんかは必ずお客さんごとに消毒してくださいってことです。Can I ask the question again here? Sure. For the payment station, oftentimes the stores covered with a plastic bag and they don't really clean at this time, but they're supposed to clean, right? Yes, they should be cleaning them or they should be putting a new cover on each time, not just leaving one cover on for everybody. Right. Okay.、Um, and then prop open doors so people don't have to constantly hand, hand everybody's not handling the doorknob.、Um, And provide hand sanitizer at entrances if you're unable to prop open your door.、Um, and then make sure information is available online about your store. And make sure your ventilation system is in good working order so that you get good air exchange in the building. Our protocols are available at our website. And it needs to be printed and posted and provided to every employee. これはじゃあ,あれですね、壁にあのこれを書いて連絡を取って情報を取られる取れるようにしとかなきゃいけないということですよね、マリコさん。あ、はい、そうです。えっ、ー、とこちらのリンクにえっ、ー、とあの今教えた情報をあの全部を書いてあります。ちょっと申し訳ないんだけど、これ英語のみになるんですけど、でも結構わかりやすい作業だと思います。And if you want to complain about a business that's not following the protocols, this is the information. <笑>これはきちっとこういうルールを守ってない人がいた場合にはここの,あの電話あるいはウェブサイトから連絡をして、えー、直させるように圧力をかけてくださいということですね。これはお店の人がということですか Is this just for the, the business owner? コンプレインとビジネスオーナー or like for the、uh, customer too? That we can, can call us to complain about businesses. And if, you know, we also want to make sure there's an, an even playing field. So if you're a business and you're complying with it 
and you see another business down the street that's not complying with it, mm -hmm. then let us know so that we can go out and educate them on what they need to do. See. Okay. ワンダフォー。何か質問ありますか皆さん。聞きたかったこと I guess you know, we can continue the discussion, but Scott, thank you so much. We really appreciate you sticking around for this part. I know it's a, uh, uh, you know, it's longer than than uh, you had initially been told, but uh, we yeah, yeah, so much. Uh, thank you. You're welcome. Yeah, I, I do have to go now, but thank you very much for having me. Definitely. Thank you very much, Scott. Right. Bye bye. Okay, um, Lily, can you uh, give us a brief? プレゼンテーション。プレゼンテーション。メイヤーのオフィスのレイラリーさんからです。Oops, <笑> Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna jump to the areas where so these are the the uh, businesses that can open on your left side and the business that must remain closed on the right side. えっと、今日のロボット。カラオケ。キャンユーオープンカラオケストアカラオケ。あ、ヨコさん、キャンウィギブアチャンストゥブリフリートランスレートファーストビフォーユースタートアスキングクエスチョン。オッケー。う
So if you go to this screen, mm -hmm. is, this is under coronavirus, um, LA Mayor City, right? Um, under coronavirus, coronavirus LA, um, coronavirus.lacity.org, you can see this, uh, Safer LA. And if mm -hmm. you click right here where it says that, you can print this out and that's the, the front pages of your order. And then after you do that, you go to related protocol guidance documents um, and you go to Los Angeles County Retail, this one right here, reopening protocols. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then you go under reopening protocols and then you find one that's, a, that's for your industry. So if you have a, a gym is right here. If you have a, um, so let me open retail right now or restaurant. Let me find one. Retail establishments right here. So I'll open that up. And if you can see this, mm -hmm. can you see have it. to fill it all in. And then there's all these different rules that you have to follow. And you make sure you uh, fill it all in. And then you share this with your employees to make sure they also know what the rules are. And you also minimize liability issues in the, in the future. Does that make sense? Okay, so um, in city of LA, no, near the business, ga kanazu futatsu no, like, tegami o jibun no mise ni no mado mata genkan no chikaku ni hara nakushi ike nai ko, ano, futatsu no shure aru mitai n desu ne. Hitotsu wa, sakihodo no city of LA no website de coronavirus dot LA city dot org no site de safer, eto, kuchi no safer LA public order. At the window or in the front? This whole thing, you have to print. This whole thing, you have to print. And then, and then put it up somewhere or just have to print it and have and it on site? Print it and then attach it to the protocol. Oh. No tegami o insatsu shite, so shite kuchiya no nibame no eto protocol no document mo insatsu shite, kini shite, kore wa eto o mise no genka no tokoro ni kanazu hatte kudasai. Cha futatsu no eto nante mo paperwork hakitsu ni naru tiyukoto desu ne. Is that right, Mike? Yes. My end. Yeah. Well, and that's why, that's why the protocol says Appendix 1 or Appendix J because it's supposed to be in addition to the safer lay order. Okay? okay? It has to be attached to the back. Make sense? Yes. Thank you. Okay. So let me share my screen again. Okay. So then you you attach this protocol to safer order and post it all you know, at or near the entrance of your company, of your facility. Um, if they, they need a toolkits, materials tailored for each industry, um, they can go to coronavirus.la slash business. And this provides free poster signages and also best practices for operating their business. Um, so the, the toolkit is a, basically a collection of information that is specific to their industry? Correct. Uh, the difference between the, um, the toolkit and the protocol, the protocol is just rules that everyone has to follow, but the toolkit provides even more information to help them uh, continue business. Okay. やり方を示すやるのがこのプロトコルの方で、で、トールキットはそれをやるにあたって具体的にどういうふうに何を使ってどういうふうにやってったらいいかという道具があのいろんな資料が入ってるということですね。And you can find the protocols right here. Let me show it to you. Um, additional resources. There's so you could have under safer LA. Go to toolkits for business and here you find sample signage that they can use for their business for example if they are a 
a retailer. These are some posters they can print and put in their business. You see it? Yeah, and there's general signs as well for business that they can use. Um, and then there's also toolkits per industry. So, so the toolkit, you know, if you look at it, is it provides um, a lot of really great information, like how to provide employee support, how to, you know, c cater to customer expectations. Things that are not really um, rules necessarily, but but uh, recommendations for to help them continue business. And you can see this. You know, what kind of uh, cleaning agent they should use? What kind of you know everything that you'd want. It's <laughs> And, right. Yeah. And they even give you like sample retail floor layout to help you. Um, they give you best practices, etc. And just to kind of give you a little information, I was part of the retail working group, and the people that were part of this working group were major retailers. Everything from um, you name it, Macy's, you know, uh, huge retailers like that, as well as people from the Grove and we, what we wanted to do is learn their best practices so we can uh, share with all our small businesses. Does that make sense? Yeah. So our small businesses are also equipped with everything they need. And as you can see this, they even have like different um, SBA loans and you know, we're just trying to equip every business with um, all the information that big businesses do have. で、several different resources for them. Um, Mariko, did you want me to go over them or did you want to just go over them yourself? She's on, she's on mute, yeah. Oh, she's on mute. Okay. Oh, sorry. <laughs> um, is this presentation available to people afterwards, Layla? Yes, they're available. But just letting um, you know, that, yeah, there's resources for people that have been looted or, or vandalized. Okay, if it's okay with you, um, I send out a weekly email to our little Tokyo businesses um, in English and Japanese every week. And probably what I'll do is I'll translate some of these items and include it in the eBlast. Yeah, okay, great. Great, that's great, yeah. あの、マリコさんがこれ、あの、um, if they need uh, cl face cloth masks or they need to find out how many they need, they can visit laprotects.org. This is to buy face masks? Uh -huh. Buy or sell. Cloth mask though, cloth. Face mask or cow to many, it's a buy or sell. Cloth mask or cow to many, it's a buy or sell. Cloth mask or cow to many, it's a buy or sell. If they need free legal assistance, they can go to this website, especially if they're having a hard time with their landlords. あの、弁護士と、えっと、相談、無料、あの、弁護士と相談、えっと、が必要な場合は、こちらのウェブサイトに行って、無料サービスになります。and then I think I'm gonna just pass to this. Um, just the most important part is if um, they're not, they don't have to pay rent until three months after the, the expiration of the local emergency, but the local emergency hasn't ended yet. So as of now, they don't have to pay any back to rent. 
Is there a sense of when local emergency is going to end or that hasn't been decided? That hasn't been decided. Okay. And is the city of LA or county for local for, emergency? This is for city of LA. Okay, so the city and county and state are then all different in terms of... Uh, yeah, the yeah, it is. Unfortunately, okay. it is. So you, ha you okay. do have to figure out what your local area, what the rules are for your local area. Eto, city of LA ni aris, ano, small business wa ima no tokoro wa yachin o, ano, moshi, eto, COVID-19 no, ano, no ryu de, ano, mada yachin wa harao koto ikite nakata ra, eto, mada harao wa nakute mo daijoku tiyukoto desu ne. Ato de wa harao wa nakite kirae no kana. So desu ne, kamo shi ne. でも今はあの払わなくても何も何だっけえっとなんか罰金とかそういうあの何だっけうん late charge とかそういうのはないんですねあと eviction にもならないです eviction もならない and then、uh, water and power if they can request a payment plan as well if they're having a hard time paying it back um Sorry, Mike, can you translate yeah, this part? これあの水なんか水道料金とかあの電気料金を払うときにもしあの延べ払いにしてほしいとかそういった支払い方法をこう緩和してもらいたいことがあったらそれに対しての相談は受けますということです。And these are some of the different、um, financial reliefs that the state has given and and county, but、uh, I'll share that with you so you can just share with them on email. Thank you very much. And these are also different loans.、Um, the only one that I do want to highlight because they have a deadline that's coming soon.、Uh, Jeannie said that it might be. Oh, yeah, yeah. Metro. Yeah, but,、mm. yeah if they, they have a business within a quarter mile from the metro station, please ask them to apply for this loan. It's up to,、uh, not loan, grant, is up to $20,000. Grant. Mm hmm. Grant. Free money. <laughs> No, from the metro. Oh, I was talking about、station. the LACD, the LACDA business recovery loan. They're extending、oh. that. They're extending the loan period, the、um, application period. So, and then the TOC small business,、mm -hmm. those funds went into the recovery program.、Mm. So we may be talking about two separate programs here. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. That's great. That's a quarter mile from the station, right? Quarter mile. A quarter mile. So, yeah, in any, any case, it's better for everybody to apply tonight and get it over with, you know, just in case it ends tomorrow.、Yeah. Sorry, so that's a loan, not a. So, just to clarify, the TOC one is a loan, not a grant. Is that correct? TOC is a grant. The one that has to be applied for by tonight? Yes. Well, I think it's a grant. I'm sorry. You know what? I think I read it's a grant, but I have to look. look、uh, yeah, a post. It's a loan, right? Loan, loan program. Yeah, it's a loan program, but it's like、um, it's forgivable. It's forgivable. Forgivable. Oh yeah, yeah. One of those. Yeah. <laughs> だからローンってまあ一応書いてありますけど、うまくこう条件が揃ってくれば。いわゆるフォーギーバブルといって返さなくてもいいローンに変わる可能性はあるということですね。そうでしょう、ともこさん。ともこさん、銀行のともこさん。あとじゃあ、しばす。ともこ from the bank was there, so I was more than that. If my interpretation was just you know, self-centered, and it could be more stringent. But anyway, いいですね。Yeah. Well, Leila, thank you very much. It's very informative.、Okay. Yeah. And this is some other websites.、Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, again,、uh, Leila, thank you so much for、uh, sticking around and doing this part with us. I know it's, it's really、uh, important、uh, for, the, for, the, uh, for people whose first language is not English.、Um, Some of this get you know, it's a little bit technical, so it's it's helpful. With and I noticed that a lot of the materials are translated into Japanese and available, so that's that's good. I mean, that's really、um, helpful for the for uh for this. All right, I think so. I just want to I just want to make a quick correction of what I said for、mm -hmm. that uh TOC loan.、Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. it's actually there's no collateral no origination fees um mm -hmm. there's a deferral for 12 months but and there's a and there's no prepayment pe penalty but then um so the monthly payments will be four hundred thirty-seven dollars and seventy-five cents, starting mm -hmm. month thirteen over forty-eight months. Oh, okay. Okay. Right. Okay. So it is a it's a loan, not it a. Loan. It is a loan. I'm sorry about that. So, yeah. I think what's important for us to know what's available, what's there. So you listed all these things, which are very helpful. And if we want to know even further, then we can always come back to you and ask questions or go through the website to find out or ask for uh, Mariko and Yoko for their mm -hmm. interpretation or you know anything that we can, as a LTBA, anything that we can provide to help you, uh, we'll be glad to do that. So again, Leda, thank you very much. Thank you. So Jenny is still with us. So if you, um, oh, yeah. she's, got all the, she's got the fun stuff. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know if you wanted me to stick around, but I'm here. Yeah, no, please. Thank you. So that, yeah, you, because I think, uh, yeah, I think that, you know, how to, um, um, you know, reattract your, your customers and get new customers. I think what you, you have to offer is very important. So it's all yours, Jenny. Okay, great. Thank you. So I, um, part I of the question. Question. program. Oh, yes, yes. Um, I know we are just talking about the business, but in the Little Tokyo, we have a lot of non-profit organization from senior season to the children's activity. Can they open, like, you know, oh. the senior center has the classes, and then those uh, kids' teenage program has the classes, like, you know, the summer camp or like a cultural class. Can they open at this time? You know, they, I didn't see it on the list, but I do know, right. um, I do know that at least one of the childcare, they have reopened one childcare facility. Every, every day they announced which business, which, you know, which kind of facility mm -hmm. can open. Mm -hmm. for county, city, you know, yeah. and state and so on. The, the thing is, uh, I, um, at this senior center, we were still, we you know we still haven't decided if we're gonna open next month or the following months. But because of the age group that we have, like you know, over 65 is the main source, and we were still debating. So I just wasn't sure how we can operate. Uh, they can operate like open to the classes or like just administrative work and stuff. So that 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 is only my question. Mm -hmm. Well, I'll look at uh, uh, Jenny. Why don't you go ahead? I'll look that up, Yoko. See if I can find it. Oh, oh, great! Thank you. Yeah. Okay. And and I think that one's a tricky one because, like, even the school, the after school programs, and this and the um, day camps and summer school hosted by LAUSD are all being held online. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. my, you know, the. My kids' summer program, which is outside of LAUSD, is also only online. So, um, but okay, uh, introduce myself real quick again. Uh, Jenny Burdeau, part of Metro's construction relations team. I head up a group of new media officers and I lead the Eat Shop Play program, which is a construction mitigation program out of Metro. And um, we focus on uh, working to mitigate uh, construction impacts, particularly for or at or near uh, small businesses located along our construction alignment. Um, あの、ずっともう長年、え、メトロとこのコミュニティの間の調整をしていただいてます。で、同時にいろいろそのこういったコミュニティを中心にしたあのビジネスを、あの、有効にするようなプログラムも一緒に同時にやってる方で。So I've known you for many many years. あの、my daughter my daughter's nearly 11 and Mike I, I actually 
our relationship is as old as the regional connector project. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, <we're good. laughs> um, thank you. Uh, so the, the, I was asked to talk about uh, the things that small businesses can be doing as we begin to reopen our doors. Uh, it, things have been shut down for a couple of months. And uh, as we reopen, this is a great opportunity for small businesses to try out new things. Uh, but one of the things that I've noticed with the businesses that we're working with, not only in Little Tokyo, but along the end, like all of the construction alignments, including Crenshaw, LAX, and Purple Line, is that businesses have changed their hours. So the need to update their listing on Google is very important. And I, I can push out that link in a moment. So. どうやって生き残っていくかというのはアドバイスをいくつかいただきます。その一つとしては、今いろんなところに出しているビジネスの情報時間だとかアワーとかそういうのがずれちゃってる可能性があるんで、必ずそのチェックをしてください。オープンは
And for me to get a, a restaurant delivery from Little Tokyo to my house, it's very challenging because drivers don't want to go that short distance. So I'm encouraging buildings, apartment buildings, especially up Second Street, up First Street, on Third Street, to look at the phone numbers. Call the businesses to place your order. Place your order directly with the business. Get around those fees, number one. And two, there are so many apartments within walking distance of little Tokyo restaurants. We've, my neighbors have got to start realizing Postmates takes a lot of money from our small businesses. <laughs> That's a lot. You've seen the articles. Okay, sorry. Yeah, oh. take out on that. Yeah, the way to say it. まあ、今最近はこうデリバリーはポストメイトとかそういうビジネスとして成り立っているようなんですけども実際やっぱりあの遠くから呼んで持ってこさせてその分当然費用としてあのかかってるわけなんで特にリトル東京みたいにレストランがたくさんあるところだったら電話一つやればすぐ取りに行けるような状況があるんでそういうものをあのやっぱりこうチャレンジしながらやっていかないといけないんじゃないかということです。Yes. I was ready to go down this whole editorial spiel about how much money Postmates takes Maybe. away. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it's a big chunk. Uh, so that, uh, those are the, the most important takeaways. It is a tough time to be a small business every day. Um, and this is an opportunity to try new things. One thing that um, has, you see it growing more often than not is the concept, the concept of subscription boxes. So this is for those businesses that are not necessarily a food place, but retail. And looking at subscription, it's much like at the, during Christmas time where we've got grab bags, but rather looking at boxes of themed goods and selling those on a monthly or a weekly subscription. Computer-based or web-based? You can do those, them computer based, yeah. You can take a picture of what's in the box and advertise that. You can even just post it on Instagram. Nothing too fancy. Subscription box ということを聞きになったかもしれませんけれどもその中にいろんな品物が入っててえそれを毎月例えば購入するとかなんかそういったパッケージになってもこれインスタグラムみたいなものに。載せてもいいし、あるいはその写真を提示してもいいし、そういったやり方で、あのまあ、定期的に、えー、商売をこう進めるやり方が非常に面白いというふうに思ってます。サブスクリプションボックスというふうにおっしゃってます。Yeah. Um, it, it's good to look at themes of boxes.、Um, one thing,、uh, especially for、uh, like my daughter, likes stickers. She likes Hello Kitty.、Um, and then a snack. It, 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 It's not you know, something substantial for, for an 11 year old, but for someone you know, my age,、uh, you know, a tea set with a, you know, teas that would complement it. And, and you know, that's the simple part. So, I'm going to talk about the theme of 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 the t h e 面白みを作ってですね、興味を沸かせるようなサブスクリプションボックスがおすすめできるんではないかということです。Yep. So I'm available for questions if there's, there's anything from the audience or from any of you. <laughs> Not from me. <laughs> Yoko さん、you have any questions? Now is the time. Well, oh, Yoko, I can answer your, question, your earlier question. <laughs> The earlier question about whether、uh, child care or daycare centers and senior centers can open.、Uh -huh. Yes, they can, but they limit it to 10 people per classroom. So,、oh. so, and you have to observe the social distancing. But、okay. not even 10. So, if it's, whether it's children or seniors, they have to be enough room for them to stay six feet apart. Okay, thank you very much. That's helpful. I appreciate it. You're welcome. Anybody else with questions? If not,、uh, Jeannie, thank you very much as, as always. Thank you.、Yeah. Always thank you. Good job. <laughs> thank you for、yeah. asking. I've missed、We're、you、so、guys. <laughs> All right. Bye bye. 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 So we are bye. almost bye. time. Bye. Okay. Can, we, bye -bye. can we conclude? or?
Should I sing a song? Other, yeah, unless there's other questions, I think we can conclude. Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, okay. 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 Did you guys need my presentation or you don't need it anymore? Oh, no, we have 10 minutes. I thought you uh, stepped out. There you are. Is it 10 minutes okay, Mariko? Uh, or I can just send it, I guess, later. Well, we're, oh. We have 10 I think we, did, can you tell how many people are still? I think I'd like to see it. Yeah. Okay, um, let me just share my screen then. Does it, do you guys still need it to be in Japanese or in English? What makes more sense right now? Check who's the, who are the participants. Yeah, I think English is okay. Yeah, yeah let's do English. Okay. Okay, are you able to see my screen? Yes. Yeah. Okay, um, well, I, uh, Ellen and Mike had asked me to just share some information about social media and um, some of the different loan programs that are currently existing. Uh, if there's any detailed questions that somebody needs, they can contact me by email or a telephone. Um, I won't show like all of my slides because it's only 10 minutes, but I'll just show a couple of them really quickly. Um, this is just kind of a basics for people who are newer to uh, online information. Um, so just really quickly, the Department of Health, they, they showed this website, um, but a lot of people don't know what it looks like. Um, this is the address. And then when you scroll down, it'll say reopening protocol. This is the location where you can you can download the required documents that you need. Um, however, if you are a Little Tokyo small business, um, Little Tokyo Community Council and Go Little Tokyo have created a bilingual Japanese and English version um, that is available for distribution to small businesses in Little, Little Tokyo free of charge. Um, and they are uh, branded to be a little bit more presented of the Little Tokyo neighborhood, which is much cuter than uh, the one you will download from the DOH website, but has exactly the same information. Um, in terms of communicating with uh, customers, um, there are a couple recommendations that I think every small business should look at at the very beginning. Um, their Google business, which is how they appear on Google Maps, their Instagram account, their Facebook page, Vivi Navi, um, their website, the answering machine, uh, the sign literally that's in their window, and also their, their email account. Um, and these are places where it should be updated with your latest hours or contact or, or whatnot kind of information. So here's some examples. Um, if you need, if once you access your your Google Business account, you'll be able to update times anytime on uh, Google Business, as well as indicate if dine-in and delivery are available, um, which is a newer feature that's now available. Um, also, in your Instagram account, in your subject line, this is a good example of a restaurant that's indicating how it can be purchased and also when is the last order. And in this case, they have cash and Venmo available for Koraku. And then, for example, for a, a retail location, uh, oops, sorry, um, it's really important to note whether or not you're open or closed and if you have online shopping available. Um, on your Facebook, we call this a header photo. Your header photo should have the most updated information or special that you're offering. So in this case, Sake Dojo. Um, I worked with a graphic artist uh, volunteer to help create their header to promote that they have a Father's Day special. What would have made this a little bit better is if they had added an email or contact information. Um, 
So EIDL uh, applications had been closed at one point. They actually just reopened. So if you missed the deadline the first time, you can actually now apply um, and still uh, qual potentially qualify for that up to $10,000 advance. Also PPP applications, the deadline will be June 30th. If you have not yet received your PPP money, even though you applied, then you should consider applying at a different bank. Um, and if you haven't applied yet, there's still time to apply. And if someone is interested and needs to apply, then please have them contact me and I can probably get their application in next week so that they can still receive their PPP money. Um, I have some other information, but I don't think there's any time for it, but I just wanted to kind of just some of those updates um, because the deadlines are approaching for, for those programs. So that's it. I'll stop there. Sorry. Thank you so much. That was, that was actually, that's good. Is that going to be available? How do, how do we access that information after we're done here? Okay, yeah, for sure. Um, it's like 40 slides, but uh, the other ones I think are a little bit, a little bit more like explanation of like how to do some of the steps. Okay. Um, but, uh, but yeah. Perfect, thank you. <laughs> Mike doesn't know he's on mute. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot about it. I'm muted. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you very much for uh, coming today. And it's, it's been a great uh, program. We, we uh, do this once in a while. <laughs> I hope not on a recovery, but something <laughs> more bright, uh, joyous part. Yeah. Well, you're muted. Ellen, you're muted. I don't, yeah, we we're um, we don't know how many businesses are coming back, but I think this information, uh, since it's uh, it's been recorded, then maybe we can um, uh, we could do it again in some form, you know, uh, yeah. you know, so or at least uh, provide a link to the information, and then we can that way that way we can um, add Mariko's um, full um, presentation to you know. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Anyway, yeah, I thought this was—I thought this was really. I saw the co some comments were really positive. You know, they were saying it was very, very helpful. So, so that's that's good. I'm I'm glad. Okay, thank you, everybody. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Mike. Okay, bye. Bye. Bye bye. Thank you. <laughs> okay, oh, bye, here. Dennis. I'm still here. <laughs> hey, still bye. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Dennis. You're, you're, uh, and, uh, and thank, uh, is, it, is it Bianca? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, Bianca. Thank you. She, yeah, she's quiet, but she's pretty, she's pretty powerful. Yeah, so. <laughs> she's cricket. That's what she yeah, is. Yeah, my, my phone is a cricket. So somebody's calling me saying, are you finished? <laughs> <laughs> hey, thank you so much. Appreciate it. Okay. okay thank everybody. you. Right, bye. 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 Hello, yeah, 